Okay, this is Paul and Catherine in front of their straw bale house, which they built themselves over the past, how many, how long has it taken you? <laughs> <laughs> it's been the best part of, well, five years building it, and then for the last couple, of, a year and a half, we've been filling around with some little deep. straw bale comes down to about this point right here yeah and uh, the point below that we, we haven't actually put any facing on or anything we're going to put tile or something like that yeah but, tell us uh, a bit about this window the window is well there's the four by four posts that su support the whole uh, structure yeah basically go down behind each on a, on side each side of each window and each door yeah and I also see. in the corners Oh, okay. And then the bales are cut into those, into that frame, and uh, basically act as just uh, insulation, really. And so those and bales <laughs> are on the bottom, are they down are down below that? Around here and here, and, and up above, up and above, up, and up above, yes. And so there's some kind of beam that holds that, that keeps them there. Yes, and there's a beam that's this uh, this piece of wood is attached to that uh, goes around the outside of the whole house and. Yeah. Um, I see. And is the support. And okay, what about the yeah, here's this this side. Let's have a talk about this. Okay, Come on, well, Catherine. Let's see you. Yeah. Windows in. Actually, on here, this is the south side. This, yeah. We don't get actually. We have most of the storms come in from the south. Uh huh. But um, and we have a, a fairly good sized overhang. I actually cut it back just a slight amount because it felt too. Uh, it felt too dark in the house, whereas the, yeah. 
the uh, the roof was coming down in front of the windows, and so we made it a little bit less uh, of a overhang, and um, hasn't been a problem with our in our case. So, so what does the overhang do? Well, it prevents the sun from from entering the windows or the house directly, um, because of the of the hang over well, the, the south the side, walls. and it also protects the walls in the in the uh, storms and such. So this is the back, but and, yeah. um, please ignore the crappy gutter work here. But the straw bale ends right here at this brown line here. Oh, I and, see. Um, yeah. And behind this is is a standard uh, two by six wall with with plywood and um, this uh, hardy backer, uh, yeah. which is like cementitious, cementitious yeah. board yeah. and it's fireproof and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, that's um, uh, the structure, the uh, shear of the house, is, yeah. uh, there's uh, a lot of it is in this uh, wall. Yeah. So this is tied into the, found, uh, the footing, yeah, the foundation, excuse me, and then, yeah, this is cement and then there's, yeah. and then there's a, then there's a pl piece of plywood which is nailed every two inches. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's nailed a lot on both sides, and um, there's that on the same s on the other side as well. Yeah. And then at the front there's this thing called a hardy frame, which is a big metal frame that, and it's tied all together and uh, gives the house shear. Yeah, I see. So um, shear is just to stop the house sort of falling apart all bending falling. this way. Yeah, in an earthquake, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay. this is the back of it, That's which is nothing special, really. Whoopsie! <laughs> okay. We have a west-facing side here, so we tended to keep small windows. Yeah. Uh, even though we do have quite a lot of trees back here, so we don't have that specific. side of the house. And, and here there's this uh, amazing mural done by uh, Catherine, started by Catherine, with a bit of painting by Jeannie. Would you like to talk? Talk, talk about it, Catherine. Well, it's uh, called 3D or raised. What do you call it? Raised. Uh, uh, 3D or. 3D, uh, ra you know, it's actually got bass dimension. Yeah. yeah. Relief. There you go. Yeah, let's. Um, let's and actually, original. Run, run your hands over it oh, just, yeah. just so we can show. Yeah, this is a corn star. Yeah. Blue corn, and this is a. Uh, Jeannie's suggestion was that I make a pot that looked like a pot that I actually made, which is inside the house. This low relief fresco mural is built into the wall of the house. It was modelled using chopped straw and mud, and then covered with plaster. The lime plaster is painted using lime tolerant pure pigments painted onto a damp surface. And now well, let's talk about the engineering of the house and the heat system is behind this door, right? Yeah, this is the hot water and the, and the heat for the, for the floor. And it's basically just an uh, energy, relatively energy efficient water heater. I could have got a more energy efficient one actually, but I didn't want to have to rely on uh, electrical pumps and stuff like that. But anyway, the, uh, the, the floor is... Um, this is the return to the floor, and then this is the feed to the um, um, to the to the uh, heat exchanger. So it has to go through a, a compression. Um, this tank allows the pressure of the system when it heats yeah. up to you know equalize. To, to, yeah, to, to uh, not explode things, you know. <laughs> and um, and then there's a, a, a valve that lets air off, and then there's a valve you can turn on and off, and there's just a valve that tells you the pressure of the water, of the uh, floor yeah. system, which is only at like 15. So the pounds. so the floor is it's just a whole series of, of pipes under the floor. How, yeah. how how deep under the floor does it go? It, it's a it's not that deep. It's only like um, uh, an inch and a half maybe underneath I the see. floor. Yeah. And so yeah, this is, the inside there's a pump, and so the pump pumps the. The, um, the water through the system, you know, through yeah. up through here and then through a coil and then yeah. back down to the floor and then yeah. off to each each yeah. system. Yeah. And then the hot water just, you know, this is it's cold coming in and then hot going out and yeah. it just comes down. And, and I've got a lot of the hot water going through the floor into the floor as well and it just pops up and goes to your sink as well. I see. Because I use PEX. You can see all these PEX lines. These are actually cold PEX lines. Yeah. And uh, anyway, um, there's the quick. That's and I hope one day to hook solar up to it so that solar feeds it instead of yeah. just cold water. And that yeah. way I'll, I'll reduce a lot of my energy costs, I yeah. hope. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and uh, it's gas fired, right? It's gas fired, yes. Yeah. And so this is our big energy hog. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's, I suppose it's not too bad. Okay. Okay. So uh, here we are inside the house, and uh, it's really much cooler inside than it is outside. Catherine's just looked at the thing, and apparently it's what? What is it? Eighty-six outside, seventy-three inside. I see. Fahrenheit. So it's really, it generally stays under seventy-six in here. And we don't air condition it. We just it's yeah. just thermal mass basically. Yeah. Uh, okay, can you just tell us about the house, how big it is, how many rooms it's got, that sort of thing? Um, well, the outside footprint is 1,400 square feet, or 1,404 yeah. or something like that, but yeah. there's only about, if you take away all the walls, it's only about 1,200 square feet on yeah. the inside. And, and Catherine, tell us, how, tell us about the rooms in the house. Well, we have two bedrooms, two baths. Let's, let's go yeah. and see them, shall we? Oh, uh, let's start oh, with the let's kitchen. Start. Let's start with yeah. the kitchen. Yeah, okay. here we I, are. I hate dining rooms that are all set off apart and not part of the kitchen. So I wanted to have a big open dining room kitchen area. Um, originally, I was going to have like a regular bar, the bar stools, right. but so far this we just works for, for cooking. We can put, we're in the middle of making a rhubarb well, pie. We have these extra tables we need to need. An old, an old desk I turned into a countertop. So anyway. Yeah. Oh, and, and uh, you've done some tile work over here. Oh, let's yeah. let's talk here. about it while we, yeah, we're in the Yeah, this is room. Uh, just basic tile a countertop that we got these a great deal on tiles. Yeah. And, um, and then I, I've been seeing this in magazines and books. People make like a mosaic backsplash. And yeah, yeah. So um, some friends and family gave me some special tiles from Italy, and then I found these at thrift shops and this is, was a broken yeah, little just, planter that I loved. And yeah, I'm just going to go behind you and see around so, the corner. Yeah, so I just incorporated it all and broke up tile and, and little beads and baubles from my life. And it goes on again around the other side yeah, of the window. Yeah, we're, we're still working. We're still working. We're still working on that. Well, it looks so, Paul, uh, that's your house and it's your dream house and can you tell me what made you decide to go for a straw bale house? Well, there was two things. I wanted to build an energy efficient house because I'd taken a lot of, uh, well, I got a degree in energy efficiency. Uh, you know, I don't agree in environmental studies management, energy management. Yeah. Anyway, um, and Catherine wanted to build a house that had um, more of a southwest feel to it, and so straw bale was a really good compromise, I felt, yeah. and because <coughs> we got uh, R48 or something like that, R it's a sort of a number somewhere around there, R40 yeah. to R50 in the walls, and um, just we both liked the idea of plastering it, uh, sort of uh, feeling of that. Um, also. The straw bale has a lot of mass in it, of course, so as far as an energy standpoint, in the summertime when it's really hot out, like it's been 90 degrees, so they're setting records in Sacramento for the no longest number of 90 degree plus days that they've had, and the house still stays at about 70. We do cool it down at night by opening it up and stuff, but um, <coughs> that's the... Um, the idea is to have a lot of mass to store the the, uh, the heat or the or the cool, and um, for when it's uh, more extreme outside, and it's, it really works quite well. <coughs> In the winter time, it uses quite a bit of energy to to actually get the slab up to um, temperature. By the slab, you mean the floor? Do the you? floor, yeah, and the, yeah. then the house, of course. Yeah, we keep it about 68 or something, but, and it takes a little bit. Once it gets down to 65, we'll turn the heat on yeah. and uh, warm it up a bit. And so it's working. And uh, well. does it take how much compared to a normal house? Gosh, you know, I don't, really don't know that. Um, yeah, I have to look at our bills, but um, I know we still pay a fair amount for propane. But uh, that's that's the only cost in the winter time. We don't need any extra uh, air conditioning costs in the summertime, which. Yeah. Usually people would have around here with mechanical refrigeration and air conditioning and stuff. Yeah. Okay, and are you pleased with it? Yeah. Yeah, we love it. 
so I have to say it's, it's, it's what we dreamed about forever and, and it's such a nice way to, to have an energy efficient house that has um, character and um, I've enjoyed building it.